and welcome to the Goldberry Artisans Podcast, a podcast all about knitting, other fiber-related crafts, and learning as you go instead of trying to be perfect right from the beginning. My name is Emily. I'm coming to you from the beautiful but windy state of Maine. Of course, I picked probably the windiest day this week to podcast. So we'll see. I'm hoping that wind noise isn't too bad. Um, if it is, when I'm editing, um, I'll probably just record again. Sorry, mm, the lighting on my face is a little... Hold on. Give me a nice view of my porch here. I decided to try recording on my porch because that will at least cut down the wind coming from one direction. So, we'll see how this goes. Also, I have this super cute notebook. I decided to start doing show notes in a notebook instead of just on individual pieces of paper every time because uh, then it's way easier to just refer back to my previous show notes instead of looking everything up on Ravelry on my project page all over again. So yeah, if you want one, <laughs> I got it from an Etsy shop called Print, Stitch, and Paste. So, it's super cute. So, you'll see me waving this around, which I probably will do. That's what it is. So today, um, I'm going to be talking about what I have off the needles, on the needles, a little bit of cross-stitching, um, what's making me happy, and um, be talking about the pair of socks that I've worn the most. So I'll be talking about the socks slash the yarn that I used to make it. So it's a little bit of a yarn review, I guess. So to begin with, what I have off the needles. I have two projects. I guess it's been two and a half weeks since I recorded. But last time, I was almost done with these mittens. And I realized I come up with like cool names for patterns, but then I don't actually tell them to you guys. So these mittens are the Winters Written in Evergreen mittens from the quote um, from Anne of the Island that says, The year is a book, isn't it, Marilla? Spring is written in my flowers and violets, summer in roses, autumn in red maple leaves, and winter in holly and evergreen. I love Anne, and her quotes are always perfect. So these are my Winter is Written in Evergreen mittens. The pattern is the Treehouse mittens by Melody of Mandarines. The yarn is Peace Lease DK Sport. The only modifications I made was to make the thumbs shorter. Can I try them on? They are a bit on the small side, like the hands are. Um, just a little bit, but I have I know I have long fingers. But I, I really like these. Um, at first I was thinking, oh, I should wait to wear them until I block them, but I'm thinking I might just wear them. Because my hands get cold. It's starting to get cold here in Maine. I have my antiquity mitts, my favorite fingerless gloves, but I'm starting to think I'm going to need full mittens when I'm outside because it's cold. So yeah, those are my winters written in evergreen mittens. The next finished object I have is also by Melody of Mandarines. Hold on. Gotta get my show notes back up. I'm on that here. The pattern. The pattern is the woodsy hat, um, but I'm calling this my It Feels Like Snow Tonight hat. Another quote from, guess who, and this time it's from the book Anne of Windy Poplars. The quote says, it feels like snow, t yeah, da -da -da. it feels like snow tonight. I like an evening when it feels like snow. The wind is blowing in turret and tree and making my cozy room seem even cozier. The last golden leaf will be blown from the aspens. So this was definitely appropriate. I started this last week, um, and the wind has been blowing, obviously, and the leaves have been coming off the trees rapidly, and there are many nights where it definitely smells like winter and snow. I love the, the trees on this. It's just beautiful. And it has a rolled cuff, so you do a provisional cast on, and then knit the ribbing, and then fold it over, and knit the provision cast on with it. I love this hat. My problem my problem is that it slides off my head. I haven't tried wearing it like all day or really out anywhere but I've worn it like around the house just to see how it goes and I can I can put it on my head and it fits. I pull it down. My problem is that it's a nice tight fitting hat um, 
but as I'm wearing it, it slowly slides back in my head. I think that's a combination of, I have, I tend to have slippery hair, and it's a tighter hat, so when I wear it, it just sort of gradually slides back. So honestly, I haven't yet decided whether I'm going to keep this hat or whether um, I'm going to try giving it to somebody. My sister might wear it. I'm not sure. Oh, the yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the Fossil colorway. Oh, funny story. So I know that sometimes people talk about how Brooklyn Tweed and other similar um, like lightly spun yarns can break. So one day, I was about halfway through the hat over halfway through, but like three quarters of the way through. And I had the knitting in my backpack because I was going from work to class and I generally I'll knit during classes. So it was in my backpack. And I had just been thinking as I was driving along, I was like, oh, like I haven't really, like I haven't had any problems with it breaking or feeling like it was going to break. Like I haven't had any issues with that. And then I was going to put something in my backpack. No, I was taking something out and the yarn had had gotten caught on it so then it was dark in my car and I went to and I zipped my bag and I had zipped the yarn into the zipper and so the yarn broke <laughs> but that was my, that was the only time that I ever had an issue with it breaking and that was completely my fault that would have happened any other yarn would have also ripped and broken um if I had zipped it into my backpack so I really, I like this hat. It's a rustic yarn, but for a hat, that's fine. Like it's on top of my hair. I'm not feeling it like right around my neck. My like scarves are where I'd want my softest yarn. A hat I can deal with a little bit more rustic, not quite as soft yarn. Um, so we'll see how it holds up. But I mean, it's a, it's 100% wool and I like that it's spun in shoot I forgot the yard label I believe either New Hampshire or Vermont which are both close to me so that is very cool so yeah that is my winter nope it feels like snow tonight I glanced at the wrong thing on my notes that is my it feels like snow tonight hat so that is all that I have off the needles um, the next project one that I have on the needles is actually one that I've talked about before but it was a while ago these are my Casco Bay socks named for the bay um, in Portland, Maine, where my school um, is located, like right along Casco Bay. So this is kind of like the view that I get from campus. The pattern is the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern by Erica Luter. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I had knit this first one a while ago and finished it, but then I took a break and knit my Gladys socks, which I talked about in the previous couple of episodes. So, I should probably take this out of the holder so you can see it. Not that I'm super far. I just, I turned the heel and I finished all the gusset decreases yesterday. So now I just have to finish off the foot. Um, the yarn is by Knitting Fever. It's their Painted Desert Yarn. I picked this up at a sale a while ago. So this is the first time I've used it, but it is, it definitely reminds me of the ocean with the browns and the blues and kind of the pebbly texture, but obviously the, I didn't match up the colors. Like where this starts, it looks a lot more like the foot. I don't know exactly how the colors work in this skein of yarn. But you can tell the color transition here is a lot more abrupt. Like it goes tan and then almost directly into the blue. But this is very gradual. Like there's a little bit of tan. Come on. Let's get that focus. There we go. Um, like this is a little tan, but not a whole lot. And then it goes into the blue and more gradually transitions colors. But I don't mind. This is the closest I ever get to wearing mismatched socks. Um, and I, I wanted to talk a little bit about heels. Now I've done like afterthought heels. I've done one or two afterthought heels. I've done some fish lips kiss heels, but honestly the one that fits me the best is a gusset heel, which is what's on these socks. I just find it just fits a lot better. It doesn't slide off my heel as much because it's, I just think it's a more defined heel than maybe a fish lips kiss heel. And when I'm picking up stitches, I know sometimes some patterns will say, oh, you need to pick up exactly this many stitches because you had a heel flap exactly this long. 
but I just sort of I pick up in every one of the slip stitches along the side and then I normally pick up one or two um, where in between the heel flap and the top of the foot and then I just decreased the correct amount of stitches because any sock I've ever knit it's been stockinette stitch on the bottom anyway so it doesn't really matter how long your gusset decreases go on so I just pick up however many stitches I need to to make sure I don't have any holes along the heel and then I just decrease. I don't worry about getting the exact right number anymore. Used to, get over that. <laughs> All right, so this next project is the one that I have been working on the most this past week. Um, I've, I like shawl knitting, I like looking at shawls, and plus it's kind of a bigger garment that generally takes less yarn than a sweater. So I love the idea of shawls. My problem is that I have discovered I'll only wear a shawl if it's gigantic and big and cozy and I can wrap myself up in it. Or it's like a scarf. Like I have this blanket scarf that I recently thrifted and I wear it a lot even just around the house because it's like, like it's six feet long I think and maybe three or four feet across. So I can just wrap myself up in it and stay some cozy. I have a couple, I, like, I have a couple of shawls, but I just, I don't wear them a lot because they're not good scarf shawls. Come on, the lighting is, lighting's getting a little wonky, there we go. Um, so yeah, so I decided I wanted to knit myself a nice, cozy, big wraparound shawl, because I didn't really have one, and after buying this scarf, like, a month or so ago, I realized that's what I wanted to knit. Um, so... I had actually, and I had actually purchased this, uh, the knitting pattern that I'm using in a sale that the designer had had a little while ago. So this is the Ohm Shawl by Andrea Mowry, which is a gigantic, big, cozy wear it like a poncho or a scarf or basically however you want sort of shawl. And I'm calling this, um my there is still much that is fair shawl that's from a quote from the fellowship of the ring that reads the world is indeed full of peril and in it there are many dark places but there is still much that is fair and though in all lands love is now mingled with grief it grows perhaps the greater and that was halvier in the fellowship of the ring so that quote just fits really well with this month november i like no i love november my birthday is next week like november is great because my birthday and thanksgiving but I'm also turning 21 this year, um, which in my head is like, I'm not old enough to be 21, I still feel like I'm like 15. Ha! Um, <laughs> um, and obviously there was the, there has been election craziness, but I also have to make some decisions this month about school and job and all this craziness going on. But it's, so it's a nice reminder when I come home at the end of the day, um, you know, if the kids at the daycare where I work have been a pain that day or whatever's going on, I can come home and I can knit on this yummy, amazing, soft, comforting shawl and just remember there is still much that is fair in the world. So when I was picking yarn for this shawl, I knew that I wanted it to just be a big co cozy, like just basically a hug on my neck. So I went, I bought some Malabrigo yarn worsted. Can you see that? I don't know if you could actually see that, but like five deer just ran by. It's the season. Well, what first saw, caught my eye was there was a truck that stopped at the, on the road. And the deer were apparently what he was looking at. Anyway, so. They're still making noise. Um, anyway, I wanted a hug around the neck shawl was basically my criteria for yarn. And now I've used Malabrigo worsted a couple of other times, like once. And but I knew that it was exactly what I wanted for the shawl. So you need four colors. You have a main color and then three other colors. So for I needed 
um, three stains of the main color. And so I went on Ravelry D stash and bought this dark brown. Um, so this is Malabrigo yarn worsted in the chestnut colorway. And their worsted base is actually an Aran white yarn. Yes. Yeah. A little confusing. Um, and then the purple, I love, by the way, like just sort of like a semi-solid or a tonal or whatever it is you call that, but it's beautiful. Is the Uva colorway, I don't know how to say it, UVA. This tan is the Chapel Stone colorway. And this white, it's actually yarn that I already owned. It was, it's actually their Rios base in the natural colorway. Their Rios base is actually a worsted weight yarn. So if you look at it, you can tell, you can tell a little bit that the white is different that it's a little bit thinner, but it's just a couple of small striped sections, which I was, so I'm fine with that. So I did buy the chestnut color and the purple, but I already owned this tan. It was a leftover skein from another project, and I already owned this white. I actually, I thought about getting another color, doing like a teal, um, and I messaged a couple people on Ravelry D Stash, but they never got back to me, and I decided, you know what, I don't need to spend the extra $13, $14 I already have yarn that's perfect that I already own. So I bought, I have three skeins of the chestnut and then one of each of the other colors. And it is so soft and warm and cozy and I love knitting on it. Like this is all I want to knit but this is not good travel knitting. Like this does not fit in my backpack to go to work and then go to class to knit class in the evenings. Doesn't work. That's what my sock is for. That's basically the only time I've been knitting on the sock. And then whenever I'm home, I'm working on this. I like that there is like the texture in the beginning, and then a little bit of fun color work. And now I'm just into the mindless uh, stitch pattern here. You know, three rows of stock knit, and then like a garter rig. I love this. This is the I haven't knit a project on uh, needles this big. The needles are actually size 10. The pattern calls for size 11, but I didn't have size 11 circular needles, and I didn't feel like paying money to buy needles for one project when I knew I was I'm not going to use size 11 circulars like ever. So I'm just going with the size 10 circulars that I had and I still need to get buttons for this because the shawl it's basically it's a gigantic rectangle but then you have buttons like on one end and then along the bottom and there's a couple different buttonhole sections throughout the scarf so that you have a lot more options of how you're going to wear it. Um, I'm really bad about buying buttons to finish things, like the my Sibella cardigan, which I've talked about a lot on the podcast, not recently, though, um, still don't have buttons for that, and that's all it needs. I guess part of my problem is that I don't really have a local yarn store. There's a yarn shop in Portland, in Portland, Maine, but it takes me about 40 minutes to get there, and it's on one of the busiest roads in Portland, and I have to parallel park. I don't like city driving, and I hate parallel parking. So I've only been there once. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'll find some online. If you have good recommendations, let me know. Because then I'm going to need buttons for this as well. Um, I do have another project that's technically on my needles. My Flora Cardi, which I've talked about in the past, but not last week, I don't think. But it's a lace weight, um, short, it's a lace weight, short sleeved cardigan from the spring issue of The Making Magazine by Carrie Bostic Hoke. And I love the sweater, and I still want it, but I still have to knit the whole back, and it's not a very, it's not seasonal anymore. It's a lace weight, short sleeve cardigan, and I want all of the long sleeve wool sweaters. So I'm kind of just basically putting that in the back burner for right now. I have another winter sweater idea that I have the yarn for that I think I'm going to swatch for and block soon. Um, just to have something that's more appropriate to the season. And I'll pick up that, I mean, I'm definitely gonna finish the lace cardigan, I'll pick it up once the weather gets a bit warmer again, which will be several months from now. So yeah, just, that's just kind of being put on the back burner for a little while, because you know what? I'm knitting for me, and if I don't feel like working on it, I don't have to. No one says I have to. So, anyway. We're going to be moving on to other crafting. I've showed these before. Um, these are my Anne of Green Gables cross stitch patterns. Today, I'm just all about the Anne. 
Anne of Green Gables is my favorite, especially fall, winter come around. I love Anne. So, um, last time I showed these to you, I talked about how I just bought a couple of hoops to hang them up. And today, I finally get around to putting them in. Oh. So this is the first one. Oh, these patterns are from Petal Pusher on Etsy. This is the Carrots with Anne and Gilbert. Um, and I just have this cute little embroidery hoop. And I don't really know how you're supposed to finish cross stitch. I didn't bother looking anything up. I basically um, cut a piece of cardboard the size of the smaller hoop. And so then I put the stitching in the hoop. And then I put the cardboard in and kind of to hold in the ends. And the little ends that were peeking out, I just taped them on. I thought about glue, but glue is much more permanent. Tape, I can always just take it off if I decide that I want to do this better or more professional. But from the front, you can't even tell. So there's that one. I still have to take the little tag off the hoop. So this is the carrots pattern. This is the Green Gables pattern. I realize it's off center, but that's because I had sewn it too close to the one to the pattern above it so I didn't have a lot of space to work with <laughs> but you've got Anne, Matthew, Marilla and Green Gables and I did the same thing I just put a piece of cardboard the size of the smaller like traced out the inside of the smaller hoop and taped in the short little ends that wouldn't fit so that's the second one <laughs> so the third one I have not yet bought a hoop that was the correct size While I was cutting out cardboard, I just cut cardboard and taped it around. I'm going to have to come up with a better way to secure the baker's twine that I have to hang it up with. But, you get the general effect. I get my little, my little kindred spirits with Anne and Diana. So, I love these so much. I'm so excited to finally have them up on my wall. I thought about just podcasting. Um, earlier today, then I said, no, I'm going to, I have time, because I have the day off work today, because it's Veterans Day, I am going to finish these, because I have the hoops, and I have scissors, and I have tape, like, what and why, why have I not done this yet? I need to clean up my desk area, and kind of rearrange my wall to find a place to hang these, but I definitely will hang them soon. I'm really bad at following through on stuff like that. So, yeah. Those are my Ann cross stitch. I'm telling you all about the Ann today. My hands are freezing. I gotta get through this quickly. So, I'm gonna be talking about one of the pairs of socks that I have worn the most. These are the Cable Check socks. This is actually a test knit I did for Ann Pottle Sack of Willy Wonka Fibers. And I actually used her yarn. Um, so it was a test knit. I don't even remember how I heard about it, but I posted it in her Ravelry group um, that I was interested, and she picked me to be one of her test knitters. So I knit these. This is the summer of 2013. I honestly had made not many pairs of socks before that, um, but I love these. So the yarn is Willy Wonka Fibers Saradwin Sock Yarn. I feel like I'm not saying that right. Um, and in return for test knitting, um, she sent me the yarn to knit it, and then she also sent the rest of the patterns. It was like a little mini collection, which is super cool. So these, are, so if you look it up on Ravelry, these are the socks you will see in the pattern photos, because I sent them to her, she took pictures, and she sent them back. So that was the only time I've done a test knit, but I loved it. So the yarn, okay, I'm going to be real with you guys. I have not hardly ever washed these. For a long time, I didn't have a wool wash or anything. I didn't really wear hand knits all that much. Um, because I explained last time about the whole Etsy shop thing. Um, so yeah. So, these are not all that clean. But if you can see, hold on. This is what the heel looks like. Um, there's a bit of it's kind of getting matted together like right in the middle of the back of the heel and then it's obviously been worn like there's the heel and there's the bottom of the toe um but i mean i've worn these a lot i even wore these skiing gun skiing twice hate it but i've gone twice and i wore these 
one of the times. Um, and one thing about it, it has, the toe is not grafted. It's, it was finished off like you would finish like a hat or a top of a mitten where you just pull the yarn through the stitches. Which, at the time, I hardly ever knit socks. I didn't even, that didn't even register to me that that was unusual. But they still, they fit really great. Um, and it still looks like a normal toe. Just a bit, maybe a bit more rounded. But it fits really well. Um, the stitch pattern is basically alternating, like, pearl blocks. And then you do a cute little cable. So these were a lot of fun to knit. I have no idea what cast on I use. Like, I... I feel like, I think she probably recommended one in the pattern, and that's what I use, because it is, it's very stretchy. Um, I will say the ribbing, it doesn't bounce back like it stretches, but it doesn't, like, pull in, but I think that could be just because I haven't washed them a lot. Um, washed them, like, maybe twice. Don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> but the yarn has held up really well, like, even, you know the only reason, like, it's kind of getting matted in the back, but it's not wearing through. It's just because I've worn them a lot, like, with boots. Um, so, yeah, I haven't knit with her yarn since then, but I would definitely consider using it again. And this is one of my first times using hand-dyed yarns as well. You can see the yarn. I don't remember what color the way this is. I didn't actually make a Ravelry page for it, so I have no idea. But it's kind of, like, it's purple and gray, which purple's my favorite color, so this is also another reason why I like these socks a lot. But they fit well. Not super stretchy, but the, but it's still, it was a fun pattern to knit, and it still stretches enough um, to wear. And I love the yarn. It's held up really well. So these are basically, like, my favorite socks. Next, for my last segment, it's getting so cold. I want to record outside as long as possible because I like being outside and there's better lighting and I know several of you um, have told me you liked me recording outside because I was worried for a while about the like the wind noise so let me know if that's an issue I can record inside like whoop. I can record inside that's totally fine I don't have an issue with that I just like being outside um, obviously in the winter time this is not gonna go well just no me and my big puffy winter coat trying to talk about knitting see that happening. Anyway, you're getting me all skittish creatures in the woods, guys. Um, so, my last segment is just going to be a quick little what's making me happy, just a bunch of random things I'm enjoying. First of all is homemade um, lattes. I've been doing, um, I've done a few London Fog, which is an Earl, basically just Earl Grey tea latte and chai tea latte. I don't do anything fancy. Found it on Pinterest. Put a link in the show notes. Um, but you basically just heat up two parts milk, one part water, and heat that up on the stove. And then some recipes call for like cutting off the tea bag and putting it directly into the milk and the water and heating that up with it. Other times, I, I've normally I've just been putting the tea bag in. It isn't a super strong flavor, but it works. And you normally like put in a little bit of vanilla or a little bit of sugar. And it's super delicious. Definitely a treat instead of, I mean, I love just normal tea, but doing a latte is definitely kind of like a little treat, which is fun. And way cheaper than buying one. Because I can buy, like, almost two boxes of chai tea bags for the price that it would take to buy one chai tea latte actually from Starbucks. So. Um, next is the, this book. This is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. If you have read or heard of the Lunar Chronicles, which I love those books so much. I read, I literally read the last one in like two days and it's mm, almost twice as thick. But yeah, Heartless, it just, I pre-ordered it. It just came earlier this week. I'm about yay far. It's basically, let me read the little, it's basically about, um, the Queen of Hearts before she was the Queen of Hearts. So it's super, I love the way that Marissa Meyer just like takes normal fairy tales and stories and changes them and makes them like much stronger characters and more well-developed characters than, you know, a Disney fairy tale movie. 
um, and just creates stories that I just I want to keep reading. I have to force myself like to do homework before I read this book. Plus, isn't it beautiful? Like it's all shiny. Look, look at that! Like it's gorgeous. Love this book. Next, um, on a semi-related note, uh, the new Netflix series *The Crown* just like came out on Netflix like last week. Um, it's basically about Queen Elizabeth II, and it starts with the time when she became queen. It's honestly not a time period I know much about, um, especially since it's British history. As much as I would love to know everything about British history, I don't. So this is just, it's really good. It feels very BBC, even though it's not. It's a Netflix original, but it has a lot of BBC characters, and it's really well done. Um, it has Matt Smith. If any of you are Doctor Who fans, Matt Smith plays her husband. Matt Smith plays Philip, and a lot of the other actors have been in a lot of stuff. So, it's, I've only, I'm only like three episodes in, I think, but I really love it a lot. So if you're into BBC dramas and historical stuff, or even just learning more about British monarchy, I definitely recommend that show. The last thing that's making me happy is this cute little bowl. I made this like two years ago, well more like a year and a half ago, um, at school and I've used it for a few things, like I've eaten cereal out of it, I've eaten ice cream out of it, because when we made them, um, the teacher who was kind of leading the it was like a one-time afternoon workshop kind of thing. She was like, I want you to make something that you will use. Like, I don't want you to just make something and stick it on the shelf and be like, oh yeah, that was fun to make. That looks pretty. She was like, I want you to have something that you'll actually use. So, this is like the perfect bowl for ice cream. But lately, I've started using it as a yarn bowl. Like, especially for my, um, for my, there is still much that is fair shawl. Like, this is the perfect size to put a ball of Malabrigo in and then it doesn't roll around because I have a big bag that I'm keeping all of the yarn balls in but I don't want to carry that around all the time so if I'm just like going downstairs to sit on the couch I just put a little ball of yarn in here. It's not, I love yarn bowls but I just cannot afford a 30 or 40 dollar yarn bowl and I have one just like this that is perfect. These are totally not my normal kind of colors like, hold on, I'm saying hold on a lot I apologize. Like it's yellow and kind of tealy blue and kind of a red color, but I kind of wanted to step out of my normal comfort zone of like cool colors when I made this bowl. So yeah, I mean if you ever have the chance to do anything different, I totally recommend it because you can make something that's bumpy and uneven, but you still love it. Oh, speaking of learning new things, I signed up for a job spindling class! I'm so excited! I've been wanting to learn how to drop spindle like forever um, and I bought fiber this summer but I just never really got the hang of it so the kind of thing where with crafts like that I just I need someone to show me and then I'm good so if you listen to the wolf folk podcast you might remember there was um, Casey Ryder was on there and she owns port fiber a fiber shop in Portland Maine it's about 40 minutes away from me and I've been there once it's actually where I bought the fiber that I bought this summer and so every once in a while I'll check what classes she has I want to learn how to spin but none of her spinning classes she does like three week spinning classes none of them have lined up at times I've been able to take them so I saw that she had a drop spindling class and it's next Saturday and I'm so excited it's the day after my birthday too so it's just gonna be like a super fun birthday weekend learn how to drop spindle class like it's just a two hour class but I'm super excited so, because I have a job spindle and I have fiber and I can't wait. Anyway, I'm super excited. So, that's just something I would like to encourage you guys. If there's a craft that you would like to explore, go for it. Like cross stitching, I've never really done it before, but I ended up with some super cute Anna Green Gables cross stitch. I don't know how much cross stitching I'm going to do in the future. It's something I'd like to keep doing. Um, but it just, it's fun to try new things. Like when I made that bowl, like I, w I would like to, I would do that again. Um, just exploring new things and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So that's all from me today. Um, I hope the wind noise hasn't bothered you too much. Oh, I forgot to say this at the beginning. I always forget. Um, you can find show notes on my blog, goldberryartisans.com. 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Goldberry Artisans and on Ravelry I am Emily Ruth B. I'm trying to be better about updating project notes. Um, I'm really bad at actually taking pictures of finished objects, especially once it gets cold. Trying to take pictures outside for long periods of time is not always fun. So, um, but yeah, you can add me as a friend in Ravelry. I'd love to get in touch with you there. And if you want to know the meaning behind the name Goldberry Artisans, in case you missed last week's episode, you can go watch that, and I go into that a bit. So yeah, I hope that you are having a wonderful day, and that in this next week you will try to expand your skills and learn something new. Instead of trying, like my my little intro thing said, trying to find like a nice little intro tagline sort of thing. We're going to experiment. But talking about learning as you go instead of always trying to be perfect because I know I can be a bit of a perfectionist. I like to have everything done right. And if it's not perfect, I don't want, like I want to, I don't want to keep it. I don't want to rip it out, but I'll just shove it in the back of my closet. Um, but it's good to just learn new things and learn as you go instead of trying to be perfect and know everything right from the beginning. So that's what I want to encourage you guys to do is just try something new, whether it's a new pattern, a new technique, a whole new craft, just anything. Just try something new. It's fun. I bet you'll enjoy it more than you thought you would. So I hope that you guys have fun learning new things this week. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.